Well, this trip in Arizona, there is a lot going on. Last year, we just scratched the surface. This year, when I started thinking about everything that's here, I said, there's no way I can do all that. So you're gonna see all kinds of people in and out of clips here. Uh, Marcus, who's running the camera, him and his wife, Kara, came down a week early to do some javelina hunting because I was at a couple trade shows. It was fun, I think. Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. This is a cool place. And then I invited Brian Call from the Br Gritty Bowman. That stupid monkey thing was like 20 yards away and it's like <laughs> <laughs> David Brinker from Sitka Gear. We're here looking for coos deer, jackrabbits, anything we can put on the barbecue. Sam Solholt, the public school bus guy. We got a buck. We think it's bedded up here um, in this thick brush stuff. Hank Shaw, very well-known uh, wild game cook who runs the website Hunt, Gather, Cook. The recipe I have up on the front page is crispy fried duck tongues. Yeah. And then Holly Heiser, she is the communications director, I think, for California Waterfowl Association. Wade told us there might be a ringneck there. Jonathan O'Dell who is a small game man, uh, biologist, small game biologist for Arizona Game and Fish. We have a real high concentration of jackrabbits in this area, they're the antelope jackrabbits. And Wade Zarlingo, who you saw last year, he, he and his dog Shiloh are unbelievable quail hunters. Superstar. And we figured over the course of these seven or eight days, if we sent everybody a different direction, we might be able to cover most of it. So you're gonna see everything about the Sonoran Desert of Arizona. Every species that you can come here and pursue, and then we're gonna show you how fun it is to eat it. And if that doesn't get you excited to come here and try it yourself someday, I guess I'm not doing my job. The whole idea after we came and did this last year was to show people how accessible this is, how doable it is. Millions of acres of public land all around us. Little towns like this one we're in here where you can rent a house or rent motels. Everybody welcomes you. You can come here and have a blast. And it is the last week of January and the forecast says it's gonna be in the 60s to 70s every day. What more could you ask for? We um, got a lot of information about what javelina do and uh, some of their behaviors and activities and some of their sign, what to look for. So we're going to be looking for that. The thing that I equate javelina hunting the most is maybe shed hunting. Because when you're looking for shed antlers, you're looking for the tiniest little things that are very hard to find. <laughs> and I think that that's what javelina hunting's like. They seem to be very, very small and far and few between. There's a lot of these weird little small cactuses that are big and look like they could be a javelina, but they're not javelinas.
the cactus is finally moved. And so right now there's four javelinas on that hilltop over there. The sun just went down though, so I'm not sure if we have enough time to get over there and get a shot or spook them. So we're gonna decide. It's up to you, what do you think? Um, they're so funny to watch. <laughs> Um, let's see, I mean, we could try, I guess, if we, like, skirt onto that hillside, because these two connect there, and then, I don't know, it's going to be last light. I got to 30. I probably should have got closer because he wasn't moving, but I well, was scared. Well, the other one spooked. Yeah, well, two of them spooked beforehand. He's choking. Yeah. First day of Pavlina hunting ever. Yeah. One of the first Pavlina you've ever seen. <laughs> Might have been the first one. He was low down. Pretty cool looking animals. They're goofy. They're super goofy. <laughs> <laughs> you gonna eat them? Should hope. we try? Should, should we try? Should we try eating some of them? Yeah, I'd like to. Heck yeah! That's the whole point of hunting. If we don't, I'll be a little sad. My highlight, definitely watching you shoot your heavily gun. That was really cool. Just because you walked straight up to it? Yeah, well, I was just like, I don't know, I was, you know. Besides that one stock I was on with Randy last year, that was the only time I've done it. And I was like, oh wow, it is standing there. <laughs> but this is cool, it was a cool experience. And it died really quick when it just ran up there. And you got your first javelina, first day. Heck yeah. Yeah. And this is how you pack out a javelina. <laughs> We're too slow for Clinton and Clay, so they went up the hill without us. But we're gonna go find another spot to sit in glass. Hopefully get a good view up here. Kara's still ex or expert camera man. Clay and Clint spotted some pigs and they're uh, hopefully heading after them. I can't find them. We we're glassing on the upper, other side of the hill from them. Hopefully they're on their way and gonna get one. We're gonna try to film from afar.
but I used to go when saw those up there. That's your first javelina <laughs> that you shot and have seen. <laughs> right? Yeah. And some uh, Wyoming elk. Burgers. Oh, yeah. Like the, we gotta let it rest. Gonna, those are gonna be yeah. good. Just throw them on like they're a chicken strip. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think, Carol? How's your, how's your uh, first javelina? <laughs> Taste. It tastes like meat. Why couldn't I shoot one like that? Got one. This guy's gonna taste good. Kara's was our, we already had the tenderloins on hers and it was super good. And we're gonna share all the meat with everyone that's showing up tomorrow. And uh, now that we have two pigs though, it means we get to take some of the meat home for ourselves, have a little more for ourselves too, which is nice. But super happy that uh, could do it with you. I'm happy you were here, Kara. Kara was like cameraman camera woman extraordinaire. Brian and Sam and Michael are showing up today and taking over and Kara's flying home tomorrow so we, she won't be gracing us with her uh, um, camera skills camera skills I think she did good we looked at some of the footage there were some artsy shots in there I think I think she did good especially for never running a camera before I feel like you got it down pretty good. I've got an iPhone. You didn't even put it in auto mode. I know, Snapchat. You didn't even put it in auto mode. You did it in manual mode. There is an auto. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. That's too easy. I am a skeptic. I have been a skeptic about this jackrabbit thing because, let's face it, we've all heard that jackrabbit are not edible. They're beyond, they're, you can't use them for anything. Hank assures me, Jonathan assures me, 
the antelope jackrabbit and even blacktail jackrabbit are fine, fine table fare. Jonathan and Holly and Hank, they're in charge of the, of the, the jackrabbit operation. This is Jacklandia. Um, uh, we have a real high concentration of jackrabbits in this area. They're the antelope jackrabbits. I get phone calls every year about uh, people wanting to hunt jackalopes, as they've heard. But um, And there's a long story of how Arizona got involved in this mess, but because we have a, a rabbit called an antelope jackrabbit, um, this continues to persist about southern Arizona. These are uh, one of the biggest jackrabbits size-wise um, in North America. They're super fast. They're, they're really kind of neat. Um, they only come up into Arizona and then uh, further south into Sonora, Mexico. Um, and uh, just a whole lot of, it's, it's, this is gonna be just like a spot and stock deer hunt, just jackrabbits. Vegetarian M and M's. <laughs> it's a rabbit scrape. It's kind of where they spend the night. They kind of dig these little, not quite holes and then just hang out for the night of them so they're a little bit protected. Hopefully we'll find one. That was like the opposite of yesterday. It went so perfectly. I was walking around and I saw this scrape area and I saw distinct jackrabbit footprints. And then I just looked around me and I saw him hopping and he hopped away at that slow lope, not the, oh, I'm getting the hell out of here. And so I just sort of did what I do with ducks if I'm chasing him, I sort of sideways stepped to him and got him in range. And there was a bunch of bushes between me, but I got close enough and there was this little break in the branches. So I just leaned down and shot through the hole in the branches and he was stone dead. Like perfect, textbook, perfect. God, he's enormous. This is the sauce for the jackrabbit. This is more of a typical like Mexican red enchilada or, or you know like a just a red chili sauce. Do you want the this, this this is what we call uh, an antelope jackrabbit. Huh? You, oh wow! Okay, I was gonna hand a spoon to you or the fork to you. <laughs> wow! Right? Doesn't suck, eh? <laughs> Holy smoke! I've never thought. I would have. You could have told me that was a. Give me a thousand different choices of what that is. I would not have guessed. Not so sure. Yeah. Now that you've seen how much small game there's all of this the rabbit hunting and other stuff now we're going to show you and this is going to be a surprise but last year when i was down here i shot a widgeon and you're going to see uh jonathan and holly and hank go out duck hunting here at Lake Arivaca and uh, Jonathan Odell is setting up our decoys and we've already had a bunch of teal buzzes. So he says we can expect mallard and cinnamons. And I'm really hoping for cinnamons because they're kind of like the perfect colors for the state of Arizona so pretty stoked about it.
So what's our plan now? Tank jump in. <laughs> it's kind of the uh, old school, you know, there'll be like, there's like six ducks in that little teeny cattle pond. And you kind of sneak up right behind the berm that holds that pond together. You pop over the top and let fly and see if it happens. It's a good way to kill um, Mexican ducks. The uh, It's kind of a mallard variant, which is, I've never shot one. So that's the hope for the afternoon. See a big duck on there earlier, so it came in just for you guys. Hmm. Oh, drop good girl, good girl. Good buff. Yeah, a lot of hen puppies, and then one ring neck, right? Yep, and maybe a Mexican duck. Yeah, a Mexican duck. I think that's a Mexican duck. Yep, you it is. Sweet, my first ever Mexican duck. It's kind of, we think this one is a hybrid between a regular mallard and a, um, and a full on Mexican duck, uh, but it's a first for me. So that was kind of a cool way to end a really bizarre closer. A really bizarre closer. <laughs> and like, then... This is like, look around, this is desert. Um, this is not really where people go to hunt ducks, but no, definitely there not. are ducks in the desert. So now that you've seen, there is waterfall hunting to be had here in Southern Arizona. And that was just one day. The, the, the crew had one day of waterfall hunting and you saw that they got five ducks. A Mexican mallard, how rare is that? So now with that, we're gonna take you in and show you the quail hunting because Wade, his dog Shiloh is a poodle pointer and Shiloh is absolutely the best Mearns quail dog that I've ever heard of. And Wade lives for Mearns quail. We're gonna go, got Holly and Hank, and we're gonna go chase, look for some Mearns quail. I came in here a couple weeks ago and found a few birds, so that's why we're back in here. Habitat's pretty good. Uh, a lot of oak cover, a little bit heavy on the grazing, uh, but as we get up into these canyons, we got a little bit more grass cover. It'll be fun, and we'll get some exercise for sure. sit there and watch this I'm like okay she is it birds is it rabbits <laughs> it's a deer they were right in these oaks last time Okay, go walk up on it. Sorry. Right. Shy's been running all over this hill trying to get find these birds. We started back there maybe 50 yards, took a break, wait, kind of waited on her to calm down a little bit. And we walked down this way and she started getting birdie again. And really intense. And then we kind of just I don't know, gave up, but just let her do her thing. And Hank was down on the bottom and he could see her on point up here. And uh, we had two birds that came up and then one that came, went back behind you. So there may be more on this hill. We just gotta let her kind of work it and see what happens because they seem to be strung out, so, which is unusual. That's beautiful. Isn't though. it? Could be a mounter. Look at the how distinct the head markings are on that bird.
Easy. Happens every freaking time. So if that one's wounded up there, you hit it. This one that went I up here, it. that went up that way. Okay. Shy, come. This is one I think Holly hit when it came out and came over here and she came went on point again. The bird came up and I smoked it. So I don't know if it's a I've got a little double action on that bird, I think. Pretty. Is it a hen? It's a hen, yeah. Yeah, and we'll check out underneath this tree where they've done all this scratching right underneath this manzanita. And that's right where they were coming out of. Here, I'll carry yeah. this right. Why don't you take it, Wade? I'm going to try and push it out over the dog. So, whoa, yep. Easy. Nice shot, Wade. Did I shoot it? Yes. It went through the tree, baby. <laughs> I'm like, I think that's where it's going. Yeah. Atta girl, Jilo. Hold. Good girl. Golly, dog. You're worth it. You're worth it, Shiloh. So, I love that Wade shared with me the one that we team shot that over there, except he actually really shot it. So it's nice to shoot one and know I actually hit it. And it's nice to see one land here and then actually go get it. Right. And you nailed it. That's like, awesome. Nice. <sighs> oh, they're beautiful. Yeah. All right, we got three more for the pot. That's a good way to end the season. Unless we get rain, this is probably going to be it. And this Pretty is well. an amazing season for me because I've only been here a few days and, <laughs> and now I've gotten four Merns quail, pretty awesome. which is pretty exciting. <laughs> it's uh, been an incredibly fun hunt. Rabbits, ducks, quail. Been good. We might be able to find another cubby. Let's go. <laughs> So now that you've seen the small game, you've seen the ducks, you've seen the quail, we got two pieces left of this hunt. And now we're going to take you into the deer hunting part. We're saving the best for last. The deer hunting is, uh, anyone who's tried archery hunting coos deer, it's, uh, it is such a challenge. It's noisy, they can hear so well. They can see so well, and like a whitetail, they got an amazing nose. Yeah, you could go sit water, or you could, you know, put up a ground blind somewhere, but all of us have said, no, we're gonna go and do what we can to spot and stock these deer. We're here with, we got Mr. Brian Cole from the Gritty Bowen. Randy Newberg is somewhere behind us, hopefully coming. Who's coming? We, right got, we got a couple biologists from Arizona Fish and Game. We got a great crew. We're here looking for coos deer, jackrabbits, anything we can put on the barbecue. Yeah, it's a buck. Yeah. So in this deer hunting, you're gonna see a lot of deer. The very first day, we're driving out, and we don't even get the rig parked. And there's a, a 
really, really nice buck over on the right hand side. And Brian, he sees that buck walking over a ridge and he's just like, I'm gonna be Mr. Gritty, man. I'm gonna run that thing down. And him and Michael, the camera guy, go after it. And you'll have to watch and see it happen. I have no idea. I stayed at the truck and kept glass. And I've done that, try to run down a coos deer before. I saw that buck. So the doe and the buck, they may have just gone right here. They might be right here. But then I saw that buck just go right over this rod, this lip. So if we get to this rock outcrop and peek down, he could be right on the other side of that. But that, I, could, I couldn't tell if it was the same deer or not. It was a nice deer, but I thought the other one we saw was taller and bigger. So I say we just skirt the edge of this in the shadows get to that bluff. Maybe I'll crawl out to the end and take a peek. Maybe they're there. I, uh, I like the wind. Covers the sound of our approach. Hopefully it'll pick up a little faster. They won't hear us coming. You know, as you become, I guess, more experienced in your days of hunting, patience becomes more of a virtue. And for me, I'm a pretty patient hunter now. And it's fun to watch guys like Brian and David and Sam get pretty excited and just go after them. And I almost have as much pleasure sitting up on the ridge, watching Brian be the little energizer bunny, watching the deer do their thing, watching Brian trying to outsmart them. That part of it, for me, that's as much fun as anything. When he went over that ridge, I kept an eye on the rest of the ridge to see if he came up again in any area where it was visible. I never saw him come up. So there's just this canyon right here where he could have gone through the backside, or he's down there in the bottom. But either way, they freaking disappear. Randy and I have been enjoying just kind of relaxing in the sunshine, observing deer, while our hunting partners are um, running a marathon around the mountains. Yeah, showing jackrabbit. The jackrabbit thing is what Randy calls it. But we left it. We lost a buck into a little ravine this morning. That we're gonna go over there and just try to relocate him now. We're pretty sure he's still there, but we also know there's probably 20 deer between here and there that we're probably gonna jump. <laughs> so, but I've sat around enough today where I have a little bit of energy, and I'm ready to go. It's hard to tell all your get all your landmarks when you come over here, especially out here. We ended up about a ridge too far to the right. Now our wind is it's a little dicey, it's still workable. We gotta relocate this deer. I I know within four hundred yards of where he is. buck we were after. Um, the wind was just swirly as crap up there. Every time I turn around the wind switches directions. Tough country. Well, 
I've let everybody chase deer today. Brian has chased deer, Sam has chased deer, David has chased deer, and I've enjoyed watching every bit of it because they didn't get within 100 yards of any of them. Not even, well, it really wasn't fair though because the deer moved while they were on their stocks. So we're gonna go a couple miles that way. I'm gonna take them to my real honey hole. I might even go stock one. No, I'm gonna let them continue to entertain the crowd. Right, David? Yes, sir. I'm gonna go spook a few more okay. pretty soon. Spot and spook. That's how we do it here on the Fresh Tracks crew. I'd say there's, for that stock, there was better odds probably of winning lottery, a million dollars in Las Vegas last oh. week at the shot show. <laughs> um, so we had a good time. Hmm. Well, if it makes you feel any better, you found the only buck there. Yeah, that was pretty slow there. Yeah. I, I saw didn't... another doe over here in that little line. I saw one more deer over here just before we started coming down to oh. meet you guys. I can't tell what it was though. It was yeah, really... it seems like most of the deer were up that way well every once in a while you gotta go to me scouting is crossing off terrain yep as much as it is finding it yep so, well uh, dinner and another day yeah. tomorrow yeah you know we have two people here who are very accomplished in uh, the culinary world uh jonathan is very good even though he claims to be an amateur but hank is a pro and I'm sitting out here glassing and hiking. I'm watching others go and make a stock. And I keep thinking about how cool it is that you can come to what most people would view as a really harsh landscape. And you can make a living with it. You, you can find so much to eat here. And, and there's no person better at that than Hank Shaw. What he knows as far as foraging, as far as uh, any type of plant and cactus and fruits from the cactus and then just how he can take any animal that we've we've shot and he can make it wonderful table fare I you know there's a part of me I I had thought about the, the javelina that Marcus and, and Kara had shot before we got down here and they saved it they they processed it and, and skinned it and got it all cleaned up but it had been sitting in a cooler for quite some time before Hank got here. And uh, I, I had some doubts about, hmm, is that gonna be okay? I mean, rumor is Havilene is no good anyhow. But Hank made it into something tremendous. So this is pozole verde. So it's a green pozole, and a pozole is just a, a kind of a Mexican stew. And as you can see, it's got javelina in it, and green chilies, and charred onions, and garlic. And then the white uh, corn is hominy. And this, the cool thing about this is you can use almost any meat. So I would use, um, I have a recipe for this in my next cookbook, yeah. pheasant quail cottontail. And I mainly use pheasant for it, but I, you can use wild turkey, you can use quail, you can use rabbit. And here we use javelina. And javelina is the other, 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 other white meat. And it's really just a lot like pork. You could use pork, of course, and chicken if you wanted to go to the store, but who would want to do that because it's super boring. Um, and it's basically a very simple stew that you can choose your own adventure on afterwards. So you can add cheese, you can add tortilla chips, and since this is a green pozole, all of the things that you add are green. So green onions, cilantro, serrano chilies, and then these are chili piquins, the wild chilies um, that are they're pickled. So it adds a little bit of acidity and uh, a little bit of heat as well. So 
anybody can kind of mix and match, and uh, away we go. It's amazing what they can do with a javelina. That's pretty good. Unfortunately, partway through the deer segment, David Brinker gets so sick, we have to take him to the airport so he can fly home. Sam Soho, about halfway through, I think David uh, and, and Sam must have got the same bug because Sam is bedridden for the last half of the deer hunting. So it just falls on the shoulders of me and Brian. But it, it's all up to us. If, if there's going to be a coos deer taken in Arizona with a uh, set of archery gear this year, Randy or Brian got to pull through. brother. I screwed that up. He was standing there with that doe right on the other side of that fence. I thought he was going downhill. He was pushing her up this way and 
then he saw me or something because he looked up. And I, I looked. I'm like, crap, that's him. And I ranged it, and I had 40.2 yards, but I couldn't shoot through those limbs, so I thought I'd get over here. And he came over, and he stopped right there, but I still couldn't shoot with limb. And then he just, damn it, 40.2 yards. Ah, oh, crud. See that crack right there on the right? Yeah. Little right spot. Two does are standing there. The buck was down in the low. It went into that fold right there. Right. And they went up to cut it and disappear in the tree. I didn't see him go toward the rock. So we got a bunch of deer out here. And the gritty man himself went after him, Brian Call, and uh, we're not sure how it's going to work out. We decided not to send the camera for the over-the-shoulder action. Nothing against Marcus, it just complicates the life of the archer when the camera guy's there. So Brian is somewhere down below us here working his way out to those deer, and I think his idea is he's going to get there and just kind of find a spot nearby to hold camp and hope that that buck, while he's rutting and chasing those deer, that they come by him. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna get over there and I'm expecting them, you know, over over to my left. So as I'm going over the hill and I'm looking, and I keep looking, and I'm just kind of, I'm like, okay, how fast should I go here? But I decided to slow down a little bit and take a step, because I'm like, if they're here, they're here. Uh, it's game over if they see me. I move a little bit more, move a little more, and then right there, like from those bushes, the doe is trotting by and the buck is following her go down this way and they trot back up and he's just following her, the rut thing. And so I, that's when I'm like, and I got the full draw and then they kept moving around, moving around and then I couldn't get them to stop. They would not hold still. So like 30 yards? So, no, 40 yards. At 40 yards, he's coming by and he stops for a sec, goes, stops for a second. I'm like, and they look like they're going to go down off this cliff. There's a little funnel. It looks like they're going to go off. So, I was like, meh, meh, and he stopped, and that doe just, <laughs> like a rocket, took off. <laughs> so he stopped for just a second, but I didn't have enough time to settle and yeah. shoot. So, <clears throat> you know, naturally he followed the doe, and they they ran down, and this is just a straight up cliff, like the hardcore cliff. So I ran down to the cliff and got to the edge of the cliff, and I'm looking down there like, Okay, and it's a long way down, so they've got to be running around. I mean, they got to pop out somewhere. I can see the whole valley, and I see that monkey thing. What do you call it? <laughs> Quata Monday. Quata Monday. <laughs> and it's like monkey walking thing. through the trees, and it's got that giant tail straight up in the air. <laughs> and it's just like doing this thing, and I, I, I was like, what is that? And I watched it for a while, and then you said, yeah, you can, you can hunt that. And so I walk over and I'm like, well, I don't know where that monkey thing is, but last time I saw it, he was right where that buck was. Yeah. So he can't make this up. So I go over to where this buck is where, and I'm sneaking. I'm like, he's gotta be right here somewhere. But these stupid things, they like, they know you're there long before you can get there. I mean, I need like an 80 mile an hour wind and like a rainstorm to sneak up on these things. And it's behind this bush, this buck, and he stands up and just takes off and so I'm like please stop you know he's about 30 yards 
because one thing I am is sneaky, <laughs> but I'm I'm not very uh, a very quick shooter. I need some time to settle. So he's running up the hill, and I'm like, doesn't stop him, and I go. Trying to just something, a squeak. That stupid monkey thing was like 20 yards away, and it's like, and it comes charging at me through tall grass like this. And I'm like, and I, not the one was filming because I'm like getting back, and I'm like, and he stops, and I get my fumbling for the arrow, and I draw the bow, and he charges like three times, and stops, and charges, and he's going. So I'm at full draw and I'm like stepping back and I'm trying to get a shot on him. He turns out he's eight yards away. I ranged it later. But I put my 20 right on him, right on his chest. And I was like, okay. But I, it was a bit of a rush shot because he kept coming at me and stopping and coming at me and stopping. So I shot. And dude, that arrow, I thought I pinwheeled him. And the thing, it, it jumps in the air and it it rolls on its back and it's like blah, 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 through the grass and I'm like, oh, he's doing the death thing. And I'm getting fumbling for a new arrow and he jumps up, starts running. They're not very fast. So I'm like running after him. And I run and run, I run like, I'm not kidding you, like 180 yards like after this thing. We're weaving around corners and that's when the, uh, that's when the binos fell out. And he keeps looking behind me and and he'll stop for a sec, and I think I could win him. I think I could outrun him. But then he went through these cracks in that cliff and straight up, and I'm like, well, I can't do that. So he, I think he lives there because of those cliffs. Yeah, could be. Like, well, in that deer segment, you saw Brian with his big-eyed story about getting charged by a Kawada Monday. Well, we are saving the best for last. We started out. We showed you all this stuff about small game, about ducks, about quail, about deer. Now, we're gonna show you something that if you've ever come to Southern Arizona, you might have heard about it. Or if you are ever have traveled or hunted in Mexico, you might have heard about it. But there are these animals down here called Kawada Mondays. The next day, after, after Brian got charged by a Kawada Monday, I told him, Brian, you can have every deer here. I don't care. I'm going after a kawadi. Today we are on a kawadi hunt, without a doubt. It's in the blood now. Um, you know, what seemed like an unlikely possibility an unlikely event now f feels possible having got to within 20 yards of one. So Brian glasses up this Quad of Monday and he's heard me talk about what a great treasure it would be to shoot one. And yesterday he got attacked by one. Yes. And he missed it. And he's, he had his 80, he had your pin all messed up. My slider sight, I slide it to the wrong. <clears throat> and so he shot right over its head. So I was coveting that opportunity. And so when Brian saw that quota Monday over there, he's like, here's your chance.
when they left here, they ran over towards Brian. We see him on a rock over there waving at us. Hopefully he got one. <coughs> down there. Not nearly as big as that one I saw yesterday. They're like a uh, ringtail. Cross between a monkey and a raccoon. Look at that. Look at those little claws, man. Those are, no, they're not really little. No. Well, we saw them in a tree, in a tree, right? Yeah. yeah. Climbing trees and rocks. Yeah, when he opened his mouth. Whoa. Another little critter. Come to Arizona, the desert. On some coos and some quaddy. Man, what a critter, man. It was just so cool seeing these guys, their tails up in the air. They look like some kind of meerkat or something from Africa. Wild. Just wow. So anyone who wants to can make fun of Brian Call all they want. But you gotta hand it to the guy. There's some serious distraction coming on around him and behind him and left and right and when he sees what he wants to shoot he's all focus he's all focus and quite honestly i'm impressed at brian's ability to shoot that kawada monday through all that brush because when i was standing on those rocks i said you know what there is not a shooting range so brian it may have taken you more than one arrow but you did it man you shot a Kawada Monday with archery gear. And if that isn't something to celebrate, I don't know what is, other than maybe the fact that we got back to camp and Brian processed that Kawadi, skinned it, cleaned it, and Hank said, let me see that. Kawata Monday barbecue. That smells good. Mm. Got a little char in there. You're gonna be the first one to eat one. Yes! Sure. Right now? Yep, it's a little hot. You shot it. You get the first bite. It's hard to believe this little dude was cruising around the rocks this morning until I put an arrow in him. That's really good. <laughs> And by the time dinner was over, the only thing remaining of that Quata Monday were some bones sitting on a plate and a bunch of guys licking their fingers. So there you have it, folks. What more could you ask for? How much more fun could you have than to come to Arizona? We all have our licenses anyhow because all of us apply for elk and antelope and deer and bighorn sheep here in Arizona. So why not come down and do some of this other fun stuff when the weather's beautiful and enjoy all this public land? That's what this hunt is about. And I would challenge all of you, if you get the time, have the chance, come down here and challenge yourself with archery spot and stock coos deer. And while you're here, 
maybe go after a few birds, maybe pick up a javelina tag. And you might even see a Kawada Monday. And if you know how to cook them, if you do what Hank Shaw does, cook it slow, cook it long, I can assure you that even the jackrabbit, even the javelina, and even the Kawada Monday are gonna be worth your time, are going to be a pleasure and experience, enjoyment that you're not gonna get anywhere else.